Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting Lesson. Um, today we are going to be going over journalizing bonds payable. So in this case, we are going to be on the end of the company that is issuing the bond and receiving cash in exchange for that bond. So let's take a look at this first one. On January 1st, 2020, Diamond Inc. issued a 10,000, 10% four-year bond for $11,600. Interest payments will be made annually, and they want us to journalize the issuance of this bond. Now you'll notice that this first entry has a lot of information. Uh, it says that it's a four-year bond, it says 10% interest, it also says that the interest payments are annually. We are going to be taking a look at that information later on. Right now, what we're focused on is the face value of the bond and how much cash we are getting for this bond. So let's focus on those two main components and try journalizing this first entry on January 1st, 2020. So the first part is this $11,600. Since we are issuing the bonds payable, in exchange we are getting cash, and that's the amount of cash that we are getting for this bond. So since cash is going up, let's debit cash for $11,600. Now you might ask yourself, if it's a $10,000 bond, why are we getting $11,600? And the reason why is probably our 10% bond pays more interest than a bond with similar risk on the market would. So for example, perhaps the market is paying uh, like about uh, eight to 9%, then we get to charge a little bit extra for our bond. And maybe we'll go over that in another video. So let's take a look just for the $11,600 and compare it to the $10,000. So the 10,000 is the face value of the bond. Even though we're getting 11,600 for this bond, uh, the 10,000 still dictates how much we're eventually going to have to pay back. So that one ends up being our bonds payable figure. So let's go ahead and credit bonds payable for that $10,000 face amount to make it go up since it's a liability. Now you'll notice that I skipped a line here. And that's just because I wanted to leave this blank to determine whether this was a discount or a premium. So you'll notice that our credit side is a little short. So I'm going to go ahead and put that 1600 over here on this credit side. So this 1600 and this 10,000 now equals our debits. However, we need to come up with a title for that credit. So in this case, it's either going to be a premium or a discount. So if we issued our bond for 11,600 and the face value of the bond was 10,000, do we issue it at a premium or a discount? In this case, it's a premium. So we're going to have to credit premium on bonds payable since we got more money than the face value of our bond by that 1600. All right, let's take a look at B. On December 31st, Diamond Company makes the first annual interest payment. They want us to journalize just that interest payment, no amortization entry for now. So let's go ahead and record. January, oops, December 31st, 2020. We're going to make our first interest payment. So remember, we are the ones paying interest. So would this be interest expense or interest revenue? In this case, since we're the ones making the interest payment, it is interest expense for us. And as we know, expenses are typically debits unless we're trying to make the expense go down. So interest expense gets debited and our cash gets credited since we are making the payment. Now, the number is going to depend on the coupon or contract rate that is assigned to that bond. In this case, it's a $10,000 face value bond. It's a 10% coupon rate. So our interest is going to be 10,000 times 10%, $1,000 for interest. Now, keep in mind when you're doing your interest payment, your focus is on the face value and the contract rate. You don't care about that cash amount when you're calculating your interest payment. Our focus is on what is actually on the bond. All right, let's take a look at this next one. Now they want us to journalize the amortization of the premium or discount. Now notice that it says here that we are using the straight line method. This is considered the easy method. We're simply going to spread out the premium over the life of the bond. Before we jump right into it, let's remind ourselves of what amortization means. Um, to amortize a premium or a discount means that we're just slowly taking the away the value out of that account. 
So I'm going to go ahead and set up a T account off to the right hand side and we'll start using that to analyze what's really going on in our premium account. All right, so I've set up a T account for our premium on bonds payable account that we created in that first entry. Let's analyze it to see how we could slowly amortize this account, especially for this first year that we're trying to do in C. So if we move up, let's take a look at what we did to our premium on bonds payable in that first entry. Our first entry on January 1st of this year, we credited that premium on bonds payable by $1,600. So we currently have a 1,600 credit balance in that account. Now, what we're going to have to do is take away from this balance. So how would we take away from that 1,600 credit? Well, we'd do the opposite. We would have to debit that account. So let's go ahead and debit premium on bonds payable. And our credit, which is always going to be a plug, whatever we have to do to make the debits and credits equal, will always be to interest expense. So as for the amount, we are going to be using that straight line method. So the 1600 was for four years of this bond. So let's take a look at the information above. It's a four year bond. So that means that we're going to have to spread that 1600 over its four year life. So in order to find the amortization for one year, we're going to have to take 1600 and divide it by the four years. That'll tell us our amortization per year. All right, when we finish that calculation, it tells us that our amortization for each year will be $400. So every year of this bond, we would expect to have this entry off to the side, a debit to premium on bonds payable and a credit to interest expense. So let's see what effect this would have on our premium T account. All right, so we have a 1600 credit from the first entry in A. We have a 400 debit from entry C off to the left-hand side. So that means that this account now has a 1200 credit balance. So every year, assuming that this bond goes on for the entire four year life, it would continuously take away from that balance until we're left with zero at the end of the bond's life. Now keep in mind that this can also be used if it is a discount on bonds payable. If the amount of cash received is less than the face value of the bond, then we would simply, instead of having a 1600 credit balance, we would end up having a debit balance. We'd do the opposite. Our plug would still be interest expense. Okay, let's take a look at this last one where the bond is getting called. So on the very next day, January 1st, 2021, only one year has passed since the bond has been issued. The bonds were called at 101. They want us to, issue, to go ahead and record the journal entry for this bond call. Now, when we say that we're calling the bond, it means that we're retiring the bond early. We are going to record that this bond is now being paid off. Now, this entry is a little bit longer but the concepts are still the basic ones that we've been going over so far. So let's start the date, January 1st, 2021. And I want to start with the cash that we're going to have to pay. This 101 tells us how much cash we are going to have to pay off on this bond. That 101 almost acts like a percentage or it does act like a percentage. So the face value of the bond was $10,000. And we are going to be paying 101% of that $10,000 face value. So we are going to end up paying $10,100 to pay off this bond early. Now keep in mind that that percentage that they give you there, that call rate, that can be above 100, it can be below 100. It's simply something that gets negotiated in that contract if you want to pay it off early. So now that we have our cash credited for 10,100, let's go ahead and record that the bond is getting paid off. So we no longer owe on that bonds payable. So we will debit that bonds payable for the original face amount to make it go down. Now it has a balance of zero. We no longer owe on this bond. Since we're getting rid of the bond, we have to get rid of the related premium or discount in this case, premium. Uh, let's take a look at that T account that we updated the day before when we did our amortization entry. 
So when we issued the bond, we had a credit of 1600 When we amortized it, we debited it for 400 That means that our current balance is a credit of 1200 Now that the bond is no longer, I guess, in service, you could say, now that the bond has been called, we need to also get rid of this premium on bonds payable. So how would we get rid of that premium? Go ahead and do the opposite. We have to debit the premium on bonds payable to go ahead and close it out to a balance of zero. So let's go ahead and do that here. Premium on bonds payable for $1,200. you will notice once we go ahead and debit it for $1,200, it now has a final balance of zero. It is done. All right. Now you'll notice that our debits don't equal our credits here. We have debits of 11,200, while we only have credits of 10,100. So we're going to end up having a credit plug on this side. So let's go ahead and do that math. We have 10,000 on the debit side plus 1,200 on the debit side. And we have 10,100 on the credit side. So our plug is going to be for $1,100. Now your final plug when you're calling this bond is either going to be to a gain or a loss. If the plug ends up being to a debit, then it is a loss. If it ends up being to a credit, then it is a gain. In our case, this one ends up being a credit plug. So we are going to have to credit gain on bond redemption. Now keep in mind your gain or loss should always be your last step because you need to take care of the cash you're paying. You have to retire the bond and its related premium or discount. Keep in mind that the discount would end up being a credit, so it might flip things up a little bit. And then your gain or loss will be your last step. You'll notice when I put in these debits and credits, I work from the outside in to this journal entry. So when I did a credit, I went to the bottom. When I did a debit, I went to the top. And I just kept going inwards until I found out what that gain or loss was. All right, so that is bonds. Um, it's really not too complicated, but the one thing about bonds is there are a plethora of different scenarios that you might run into. So all it really takes is a bit of practice and keep in mind all of those essential rules. So remember your amortization, remember how long the bond is, remember the difference between a coupon rate and what a, an effective rate might be, because your problem might give you an effective rate. All right, keep practicing. In the meantime, I'll keep making more videos so that you can get some more examples of what you might see. And in the meantime, until next time, happy studying.